Post-World War I America was a bustling and vigorous nation, prosperous and full of life. Revolutions in manufacturing made way for mass production of automobiles and other means of transportation. This stimulated the economy and tricked many into believing that wealth and excess could have no limits. The stock market saw a dramatic rise, one that speculation said would have no end. Then, in the summer of 1929, there were ripples in the economy. Unemployment was rising and sales were down. Farms began failing in record numbers. Still, the excitement and spending continued until October 24, 1929, when the stock market proved speculation wrong, fell 11%, and came crashing down. By the beginning of the 1930s, almost one-fourth of all workers were unemployed. People were often homeless, starving, or both. President Herbert Hoover did not actively work to assist the millions of suffering Americans. But in 1932, America elected a new president by the name of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who pledged to help in any way possible. Using experience from programs he implemented while governor of New York between 1929 and 1932, Roosevelt created the Works Progress Administration in 1933, allowing suffering Americans temporary financial aid in return for working for the government. They built highways, schools, and other structures for public use. One subcategory of the WPA was the Farm Security Administration, intended to help combat rural poverty in America, approximately one-third of the American population at the time. Formally known for rural rehabilitation, the FSA addressed poor and suffering farmers, sharecroppers, and tenant farmers in the South, Great Plains, and Midwest regions. One program implemented by the FSA was to purchase land owned by poor and failing farmers and combine lands in order to create a group farm. The Farm Bureau criticized this program harshly because they felt it was too closely related to collectivizing agriculture. Ultimately, the program failed because the farmers wanted some kind of ownership in the land they were helping to farm. This program was later revised into a program aimed at helping poor farmers buy land. However, the FSA did have one major success. It is perhaps best known for its photojournalism unit. This integral part of the FSA was headed by economist Roy Stryker and was intended to garner support for both the farmers themselves and the FSA's politics by capturing real-life rural America. A team of 11 photographers, including Dorothea Lang, Jack Delano, and Gordon Parks, traveled the nation in order to show that these areas of the country, often forgotten by the more urban and industrialized Northeast, suffered from the same kind of despair felt nationwide. These photographers, some of the nation's best at the time, allowed the FSA to become an influential organization. During its existence, this unit generated thousands of black and white photographs for which it is now world famous. Beginning in 1939, it also created several hundred color photographs, though these were not discovered until recently. These photos can now be found at the Library of Congress as a testament to the poverty of farming regions during this period in America. Through the work of this group of amazing photojournalists, the documentary photography genre was born. This type of photography serves as a historical record of the plight of the Depression-era farmers. It takes a realist approach and touches not only the photographers themselves, but the public as well. Jack Delano wrote in his autobiography, To do justice to the subject has always been my main concern. Light, color, texture, and so on are important only as they contribute to the honest portrayal of what is in front of the camera, not as ends themselves. One region visited by FSA photographers was the state of Illinois. Filled with coal mining towns and small family-owned farms, Illinois was vulnerable to financial ruin and was crippled by the Depression. 
Photographers Arthur Rothstein and Russell Lee captured a number of photos from central and southern Illinois. Here are their photos. Today, the legacy of these seemingly simple photographs can be seen in multiple places. The remnants of Farm Security Administration projects can be seen throughout rural Illinois, and their photographic evidence serves as an invaluable resource in studying the Depression era and its effects on rural America. It is because of the work of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Roy Stryker, and his team of photographers that those of today are able to study the farms of the past. Times were tough back in 35. That's me and Uncle Joe just trying to survive a cotton farm. The Great Depression. If it looks like we were scared.